are invisible aliens among us? Well, that is exactly what this video from Northrop Grumman is proposing. Get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like, please subscribe, share on social media, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, I came across this really great Twitter thread from The One, and it's a really, really intriguing. Okay, so yeah, someone on Reddit posted this find, and uh, back in 2021, the official Northrop Grumman Facebook page posted a seconds-long video clip with no sound alluding to E.T. walking among us but in a shadow biome. What? And the reason why this is significant, if you don't know who Northrop Grumman is, uh, Northrop Grumman Corporation is an American multinational aerospace and defense technology company with 95,000 employees and an annual revenue in excess of 30 billion. It is one of the world's largest weapons manufacturers and military technology providers. So when we talk about contractors that are working on UFO related material, probably reverse engineering this stuff or farming this technology out, you know, definitely one of the leading contenders uh, for some of that technology. So what exactly did they share? Well, let's watch. Got a little invisible alien guy walking through there. And that, that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. And uh, hinting at, uh, um, I suppose, the shadow biome, as some are calling it. I am not an expert on the shadow biome. I've read a little bit about it. I've watched a little, a little bit about it. But I don't feel like I'm really qualified to talk about it. So let's go to somebody who is. Let's hear what Gary Nolan has to say. You know, when I... Uh interviewed Oak Shannon, the, the former special projects man manager for Los Alamos, um, and a name that comes up a few times in the Admiral Wilson documents or the Eric Davis notes. Oak said to me that the conclusion they came to at the labs was that this phenomenon is interdimensional in nature. So what do you think, Gary? Do you agree with Oak Shannon? Um, well, I don't have any direct experience as to whether or not they are interdimensional or not, but they, at the very least, they seem to be able to control the ability to step in and out of apparent reality. So they they might not come from elsewhere. They might be from here, but they've learned how to move in ways that were, could only be described as interdimensional. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, for instance, let's let let's explore something that's been puzzling me for some time now. Um, so many of the claimed Um, beings that people have interacted with and trying to find whatever the right word is without attributing too much illusion to them, um, look humanoid in one way or another. Two legs, two arms, not always the same number of fingers or whatever, but um, a very similar body plan to us. But overall, um, I don't get it. As a geneticist, I don't get it. So uh, it just it becomes very difficult for me to explain why this is the only form in which intelligence can inhabit, even if it's a fairly varied form. So that tells me one of two things. Either these things are made to look enough like us so that they're, let's say, avatars of some kind uh, through which something else less, let's say, understandable is interfacing with us. Uh, that's one option. I don't know that. I have to break in here to say that that is absolutely true, that these beings can and do uh, have the ability to, based on my research, and I've done qu quite a bit of it, uh, I don't want to say it's more than Gary here, of course, but um, based on many experience or accounts, the beings can appear to be human when they are not. Sometimes experience, experiencers will say, hey, is that your true form? I want to see your true form. And they will show them their true form and it will be something completely different. It'll be a, you know, a mantis being or what have you. 
And uh, so they do absolutely have the ability to uh, mimic human, uh, you know, shape. And that is true as well for near-death experiencers. People who have died and been to the other side and come back, well, sometimes when they're on the other side, they will encounter beings. And as every now and then you'll get an experience where they will encounter a being that looks human, but that is simply to put them at ease. And once they understand that, they will ask to see their true shape or, or what have you. And they, they will be told or given the information that uh, that is not their true shape, but they are given that to placate the individual going through the, this experience. And that was actually appreciated by the individual. Okay, back to Gary. It's true, I'm just saying it's one option. Um, or two, it, they come from some adjacent reality which is sufficiently, let's say, similar to us that they, you know, at some point in the past, evolution broke off in a different way uh, and still create, and so they kind of look like us, but they are not. And that, in so saying, they're able to more easily jump to us because in whatever the metaverse is, it's closer. I don't know. Or maybe, they don't want to go over and talk to the octopoids <laughs> because they have nothing in common with the octopoids or the, you know, I use the example of, we're more likely to be able to breed with a rutabaga than we would with some of the things that we supposedly seen. That the, the genetics just don't operate that way. And so, but that's with my, understanding of genetics and so maybe i'm just wrong i you know I, I i can't be too absolute about what my definitions of the possible are if i'm going to be willing to uh if i'm going to be able to be open-minded about what the possibility is um and so i don't understand that and so the only i mean an easy out is maybe interdimensional but it's also a fake out just like, you know, waving the wand of quantum, you know, nonsense around. Every time we want to explain something, it has to do with a, with a quantum version of, you know, of uh, quantum empiricism, or you name it. I, I, it's just, it's just we're we're using words in, in we're using words that almost mean nothing, as if it means something. So we just have to be very careful about it. So there you go, Gary Nolan's two ideas that they look like us, but they're actually those when they look like us, they're actually avatars, or else they evolved, um, you know, alongside us, but then broke off into their own shadow biome, which uh, I still don't quite understand. But I guess I get the basic idea that they are here and not here at the same time possibly phase shifted slightly out of our reality. I think that is the idea. Uh, you know, maybe they exist on a slightly different vibrational level than we do. Perhaps that would explain it. Or are we talking about, you know, a, a different dimension? Or is that possibly what, you know, different dimension means? Uh, is it something like, you know, if, if reality is the visual spectrum, and or the reality is is the light all, all the light spectrum and we exist in the visual spectrum but there's also ultraviolet and infrared and you know, the things that exist far outside of our visual spectrum that are still occupy our reality uh is that kind of the idea of the shadow biome let me know your thoughts in the comments below if i'm getting close to this however i think all of those things are on the table and are very likely true. The dimensional aspect of this definitely seems to be present according to many experiencers, people like the quantum uh, computer guru Deep Prasad and Whitley Strieber. They have said that when they have been taken, they are taken to a place outside of our reality. They, they, they say it's a deeper level of reality. Those are Deep Prasad's own words, a deeper level of reality. And I think that Whitley Strieber said essentially the same thing. And that is echoed 
uh, amongst many experiencers is this idea of going outside of our reality to somewhere else. And I think the best way to look at this, the best insight I can give is to look at near-death experiences because that is what they describe as well is they are taken outside of this reality, even outside of time. Time exists all at once to people going through these experiences. Somehow it doesn't drive them insane. It's actually normal and natural and they feel great up there, uh, typically. There are a few uh, negative near-death experiences to be sure. The vast bulk of them seem to be positive, thank goodness. Um, but that is a possible insight into the sort of reality we're dealing with is there is the reality that we inhabit this 3d physical reality that has a linear time structure and there is something outside of that maybe the bulk of the uber reality exists outside of our tiny little bubble reality uh, and we as souls come into this reality for some purpose or reason. At least that is the uh, idea you get if you study near-death experiences for any length of time. And in many of these experiences, they actually encounter aliens and non-humans. That is very common in near-death experiences. Sometimes they will go and live on a different planet as a different species for a while. And they will be able to come back and tell people all about these uh, water worlds or whatever, where they existed as a mermaid or a dolphin-like being or something of that order. Uh, so, you know, that kind of gives us a little peephole into the idea of dimensions and experiencing different dimensions as does out-of-body experiences. I love to study out-of-body experiences just as I love to study near-death experiences. And I have actually been trying to provoke an out-of-body experience in my own half-assed way. I'm, you know, I wish I was more dedicated. It seems to take a lot of work to have an out-of-body experience. Uh, you have to interrupt your sleep uh, if you do it in the technique that I'm thinking about for a month or two before you might maybe have an out-of-body experience. So I, I haven't quite committed to that. So I've just been trying to do it through meditation and so on. But I would love to experience other dimensions. And I would, you know, likewise love to take a journey through this shadow biome, which may be slightly phase shifted out of our reality, but exists here on Earth or possibly in some parallel Earth uh, that is, you know, connected to our Earth, and these beings can kind of come and go, potentially. That's kind of how I think of Bigfoot, is uh, like Gary was saying, something that evolved alongside us, but branched off into a different, uh, a different path, a different evolutionary path. That's how I view Bigfoot as, you know, we evolved in a technological path. What if Bigfoot evolved in a spiritual or consciousness path and learned to, you know, its consciousness became so elevated it could phase in and out of reality? Something like that, I think, may or may not be the case with Bigfoot. I have no idea. Let me know your thoughts on Bigfoot below. But I did want to talk about the shadow biome, especially since it was brought to my attention that Northrop Grumman, um, you know, a huge a huge contractor, a very important one uh, to the U.S., is, and or was, two, year, two or three years ago, uh, promoting this idea of invisible aliens walking amongst us. What does Northrop Grumman know that the rest of us don't? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. If you want to support the channel, hit subscribe. There's a PayPal link below. You can do Super Chat. You can buy one of my books. Link in the description. There are plenty of other videos uh, on the channel for you to check out. And in the meantime, this is Jack with Cosmic Road signing out.